Thursday, and I, uh, I decided to go down a little bit of a dead end corridor, a bit out of the way. Um, it's actually the exit, but um, not many people come down here. A couple of times early in the morning, I haven't slept. I have to come and do some exercises here. Uh, you just see down the corridor. Uh, this is T9, ninth floor of the tower. I feel like I'm in a science fiction film. I uh, had a good night's sleep last night. Thank you very much for your prayers. Uh, more tests and things, more meetings with doctors. <clears throat> we'll see if they send me home for the weekend. Though there's an old guy, an old Turkish guy called Seljuk. I say old, I mean, he's probably my age. But uh, uh, he uh, he was able to go home on Tuesday, but probably not until Monday now. So a lot of disappointments around in the hospital. Uh, you just have to go with the flow, I would say. Go with the flow of Jesus and just surrender to Him. Talking about Jesus, uh, John 5 31 uh, says this Jesus says, If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. Obviously, He did say a lot about Himself. But He's also referring to John, and the passage goes on to talk about John the Baptist and his testimony about Jesus. And of course, ultimately, also, it's His Father's, Jesus' his Father's testimony about Him that matters. I was just thinking about it. One of the things about these these data readings is that they're whatever. Um, they're not expository preaching. Um, they're just whatever reflection I have, I suppose, on the passage. And I was thinking about my testimony. And if I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. In a much greater way than Jesus, of course. Um, Sue often used to, uh, often... Uh, criticizes my sermons because there's not enough stories in them um it's a real um what's the word um uh, tension do you tell lots of stories about yourself to illustrate it but thereby distract and with remove attention from christ or do you stick to the text and perhaps don't illustrate it or don't give any examples i know one preacher who's great fun to listen to lots of anecdotes lots of stories and at the end of it you think that's oh, great inspiring what did he say about the Bible? Not a lot. Always has a verse to start off with and then goes all over the place. Uh, very inspiring and entertaining. Um, you probably know who he is, so I will not mention his name. Uh, but um, at the end of it, I'm always thought, well, he didn't say anything about God, about the, about the Bible. It's a lot about God, but not, not from Scripture. I think that's a weakness in some, some kinds of preaching. In some kinds of preaching, it's just all exposit, exposition and no application. And no illustration is a lecture, which can be useful as a lecture, but not as a sermon to give you life on a Sunday morning. I want to tell you a story, though, uh, today. Um, I was a few guys in the, in the side ward that I'm in and tried to get to know them. And, um, uh, one guy found out I was a pastor, and uh, he was in a lot of pain, and they wouldn't give him any medication. I'm not sure why. Whether they were justified or not, I don't know what the rights and wrongs are. But he, he said to me, he said, uh, he did it. I said, what? Well, he gave me the medication. I said, oh, that's great. I'm really glad. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I prayed. Uh, I said, I said to God, I said, Steve's here. A vicar, Steve's here. So do something. And he did. God hypnotized the nurse to give me the medication. So that's an answer to prayer. It's not exactly saving faith. Not exactly theologically correct, but it's the beginnings of faith in that man's life. He's had some kind of God encounter here in a hospital. Um, and our testimony, even though our testimonies maybe we think are weak, um, can have an effect on people. Um, you don't know what your words will do. And um, at any moment it's possible for somebody to have a God encounter and be brought that little bit closer to him. <clears throat> so that's a story, that's an illustration. And it's this guy's testimony. Apparently he used to be an altar boy when he was a, a young lad. And uh, so here we are. God is faithful. God is at work. God is moving. And he's moving in your life as well. Ask him to show you 
where he's moving, what he's doing, and then flow with what he's doing and cooperate with him. Because he's doing something. Often we don't know what it is, but we can trust him. And I encourage you to trust him for whatever's happening in your life, because he is faithful. Amen.